yeah, I feel like this activity has actually been really useful for that. So in one of Natalie Goldberg's essays, she talks about how important it is. Well, in one essay, she talks about how important it, it is to be a tourist in your own town and to go to all those places that as someone who lives in a particular town, you would never go there. And she tells a story about a friend who lived in New York who hadn't been to um, the Statue of Liberty since she was like in grade four in the town where I live. Sorry, I'm a little bit of, as you can see, I'm out on the trail hiking. I'm a little out of breath, but um, there is a particular waterfall that I've wanted to see for a really long time. And it's been funny doing the walk today and thinking about Natalie Goldberg and a number of her essays that talk about various things. One of them being like that attention to detail, which I did on day three. So walking around just then, I found myself really paying attention to like what the earth felt like when I was walking on it, how I would verbally describe like the banks of the creek here, the coolness of the water, how if I were to put this scene into words, what words would I use? How would I describe it? How would I articulate that? And the reason why I was thinking about this in particular is because in the portion of my fantasy novel that I'm writing right now, the two main characters are wandering on roads and they're trying to get to, they're wandering from village to village, trying to get to um, a particular place. And so it's become a bit of a road trip book, um, but it's all on foot. So it's been, and it's all in the wilderness. So I've been really paying attention to everything today as I've been going. Like I've lived in this particular town for four years and I haven't known about this particular hike and the waterfall that is here for a really long time, but I've just never made the time to do it. But now thanks to Natalie Goldberg, I had serious motivation to do it. So you'll see some footage in this particular video of the hike here. But then the other thing I want to do today in this same video, maybe I'll do it here, maybe I'll do it somewhere else, is um, Natalie Goldberg talks about learning how to write anywhere. So I might grab my notebook and pen out of the car before I leave and do some writing here, or I might go to another location. But that's something else I want to try today is writing outside of the home. Um, so often I do that in cafes on my laptop, but I, I don't know that I've ever written in the wilderness. So that could be like a fun thing to try today. seriously how cute is this so it's like little stone steps and a little tiny creek crossing and then some more stone steps up onto the other bank so um this is definitely giving me some ideas of ways to maybe make some more interesting scenes in my novel because at the moment my characters are just kind of walking on these dirt paths and I'm really vaguely describing the setting but um actually coming out here today has given me some really good ideas because I think the thing is, um, I'm quite a visual person, so it, it is good to actually go out and be in nature like this and you get some ideas. But often when I'm at home and like, say, if I'm describing the physical appearance of a character, I often try to find an image online that's kind of like the image in my head and then think about how I would describe it. And now I'm thinking I'm probably going to do a similar thing with trying to make my settings more interesting. Everybody! Okay, so the horses were pretty cool. So the reason why Natalie Goldberg thinks it's important for you to practice this activity of being a um, tourist in your own town is because when you travel, you pay attention to things in a different way than when you're just kicking around doing your everyday sort of stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like when you travel, you pay attention to things um, much more intensely because you're in a foreign space you're observing things, you're noticing things, all those sort of sensory details, your senses are heightened. So when you practice this in your own town, you're sort of just like developing those observation skills. Even walking around now, I feel like I am paying more attention to the sounds here. It's mid morning and can you hear all the birds? It's really nice. 
So that's been really nice just, again, getting that sort of like sensory information that I can put into the novel. Now, don't get me wrong. I hate taking my phone on a bushwalk. It sort of defeats the purpose of a bushwalk. But I'm willing to do it for the greater good of filming this so that then you can get this information, and hopefully some inspiration, so that when you go out on a bushwalk, you go and do this stuff. Just don't take your phone. So I just saw a goanna, but... I thought too late to pull out my phone and record it. It wasn't huge. I mean, I wouldn't have wanted to stand on it, but um, yeah, pretty cool, so we're going up. So when I looked this place up online, it actually said it was a really good place to come and do bird watching. And yeah, that's definitely the case. I've seen kingfishers, rosellas, cockatoos, um, kookaburras, so yeah. Uh, my fantasy novel is obviously not set in Australia, uh, it's set in the secondary world, so obviously there'd be different animals. That's actually the thing about fantasy, it's like how different do you make it? But I've still gotten ideas around how to describe creaks, the sounds of like your feet on the footpath, footpath, haha, uh -huh, on the dirt road and stuff like that. So even though the setting is going to be remarkably different, I mean you still draw inspiration from this world, so yeah, I feel like this activity has actually been really useful for that. So I am filming this a number of days after that bushwalk. And on that particular day, I didn't get the opportunity to sit down and to work on any of the insights or little ideas that I got while doing that walk. But the next day I did get to go to the park and I did, I think like 500 words or four pages um, of description and writing about my characters moving through the forest and using ideas from my particular bushwalk. It actually did make it a lot easier to put that description in because I don't always find it that easy to think of that stuff. It's definitely a bit of a shame that I didn't get to do any filming on the actual day after I had gone to do this bushwalk because I know that I would have had much greater insights and I probably would have had a lot more to say. But I do remember going to the park there that day definitely gave me a lot more ideas around how to like verbally describe the settings of my book. So that did feel like a really good um, excursion in itself. So I definitely do recommend that if you struggle in particular with describing settings, if you can go to that setting, then that's pretty ideal. Obviously it depends what kind of genre you're working on, whether you're writing about um, a city or a place that you can easily access. Like all this stuff is completely um, unique to every writer and their situation. But if you can, then I definitely recommend it. And if you can't, then there's workarounds like going online and looking up images on Google and things like that. But what I want to talk about right now is I decided to do one of Natalie's other challenges, which is all about learning to write anywhere. So learning to write in any situation, in any environment in particular. And she actually talks about sitting underneath a tree in a cemetery in New Orleans, writing and then looking up after an hour had passed and thinking this is perfect so this week just passed i actually did a really short trip just for a couple of nights to a city near me and i decided to do some writing and to just see how i went so i'll show a little bit of footage right now because you know so interesting getting to see me write Now what I do have to say about this particular writing session is that it was really, really tough. And it was tough for a couple of reasons. One was because when you're in a different city, you are sensory overload and your attention is heightened. Um, you're very easily distracted. You're very, your focus is very outward rather than inward. And in another one of Natalie's challenges, she invites you to be a tourist in your own town, which is something I've already filmed. And that was highly valuable. But when I was a tourist in another city where everything is legitimately new, 
it was really distracting. And when I sat down to write, it was super tough and the words did not flow like rare honey. They were not easy to come by. And I think I gave myself half an hour and I felt every minute of that half an hour. I actually never sunk into the work. Now I have written on holiday before just to sort of experiment with it. And personally, I have always found it tough. It's, I find it really difficult to sink into the work. And I think part of it is because you're out of your routine and you're in another city, so you don't really want to sit and disappear into another world because there's the excitement of the new place and the newness of the new place. And you want to go and see stuff and hang out with friends and go to cafes and go to museums and galleries and all that sort of stuff. So I, I don't think that this is something I would continue to do. And to be honest, I work really hard when I'm at home. I don't think that that's something I need to carry over when I go on holidays and things like that, unless I get a genuine burst of inspiration. And even then it's more likely to be say note taking rather than long form writing, sitting down and working on say like a whole chapter or something like that. So it's not something I would actively seek out to do again, but it was an interesting experiment and you don't know until you actually do it. But I do have to say that there were probably some additional things that were going against me. One was it was much later in the day and that's not my power hour. I'm a much better person in the morning. Um, just ask anybody who knows me. And one of the other things was where I was sitting it was not a very aesthetically pleasing place. And there were people around me that were talking and all that. I don't know, it's weird. I can write in cafes because there's lots of white noise, but when you're in a library and there are just two other people behind you talking, that's a very different situation. And it was quite difficult to try and like block that sound out. So yeah, that's my two cents. Something that really did work for me though, was in being in a new city and just paying attention to stuff. Even though sitting down and having an actual writing session wasn't all that fruitful or useful, being in a new city and just experiencing different offerings that a city has versus where I live. So in particular, getting to go to a major gallery and walking through the shows that were there, like that's the stuff that's really inspiring. In addition to, of course, just having a break and having a rest from the regular routine, the regular responsibilities of everyday life, like that in itself is really refreshing so that when you come back, you are actually excited to return to the page because you've had a break from it you're hungry to write again. So I'll show a little bit of footage of some of the displays at the art museum that I went to. Now, if you'd like even more writing advice, you can head to taraeast.com and dive into the archives. While you're there, please consider joining my email newsletter. When you do, I'll send you a free gift, plus you'll receive a newsletter in your inbox every single Thursday morning, including a note by me, some resources I've recently loved and think you will too, as well as some other tidbits that I only share via email. So this is my last video for the Natalie Goldberg challenge. I've really enjoyed this. It's actually really mixed things up for me. And I've had some really nice responses from everybody about this. So I hope that you have also gotten a lot out of these videos. And if nothing else, maybe it's just given you some ideas on how you can mix up your own routine because things can become stagnant after a while. I hope you all have a lovely Christmas break. I'm not gonna have any YouTube videos up for the rest of December. So go do some writing because the world actually does need more books.